I have some very exciting news to share with you all today. You can finally play PC VR games on the Oculus Quest, Quest 2, or any other headset without a VR-ready PC. This is amazing, as it allows huge amounts of people to play all the VR staples like Half-Life Alex, Boneworks, Asgard's Wrath, and Stormland, as well as so many of the other huge VR games that are not available on the Quest 2. If you just want to skip to the review, there will be timestamps in the description, but without further ado, let's get into how it works as well as the tutorial. In order to play PC VR games on the Quest or Quest 2, you need to subscribe to a service called Shadow. Shadow is a cloud computing app where you pretty much rent a PC that is based in the cloud, meaning you don't actually have to have the physical thing. It's a little bit hard to explain, but you'll see more how it works in the tutorial. However, because you don't have the physical PC, it does mean latency and how well the game works is based entirely on your Wi-Fi connection. But for now, let's get into the tutorial. This process is actually pretty simple to set up. The first step is to visit the Shadow website, which will be linked in the description. From here, you want to click the subscribe button in the top right. After this, you enter your email address and proceed through the checkout process. This service does cost $15 a month or $144 if you subscribe for a year, meaning $12 per month. After completing the checkout and placing your order, it takes about a week for setup before you can actually use the service. When your PC is ready, you will get an email, and at this point, you just need to download the Shadow app on your phone, tablet, laptop, or desktop. If you just plan on using the service for VR gaming, it doesn't really matter where you download it, as long as it has a good Wi-Fi connection. However, I find it easiest to use a PC or laptop. If you also want to use the Shadow PC for other things as well, such as traditional PC gaming, then a laptop or PC is definitely recommended. Open the app and complete the setup process, and then simply select the Start Shadow button. After a few moments, you will see a new window pop up that looks like a new desktop. This is your Shadow PC. From here, you need to download SteamVR, the Oculus app, or whatever other platforms you want to use for PC VR gaming, and buy whatever games you would like to play. All you need to do now is download the Virtual Desktop Streamer app, open it up, and put in your Oculus username. Next. Strap on your headset and buy the Virtual Desktop app. It's $20 on the Oculus Store and allows you to connect a PC to watch movies, play games, or even just do traditional work. Now, I'm not entirely sure if this next step is required, but on SideQuest, download the Virtual Desktop patch to your headset. If you don't know how to do this, I'll be uploading a tutorial on installing SideQuest soon. The last step is to open up the Virtual Desktop app on the headset. The Shadow PC should connect automatically, but if it doesn't, select the Shadow PC and choose Connect. Once connected, you can play any games you've bought in the PC VR library without a PC and totally wirelessly. And now for my review. If you have a Quest or Quest 2 and have been interested in getting more out of VR but don't have a good PC, this is a great opportunity. Finally being able to play all the big VR games you hear about all the time but have never experienced is fantastic, especially when it's totally wireless. However, this service does have a few cons. First, it's somewhat expensive. With subscribing to the service, buying virtual desktop on the Quest 2, and buying any games you want to play, you can easily end up spending $100 to $200. If you don't plan on playing that many games, then this isn't a big issue, but it's at least something to consider. Next is how Wi-Fi intensive it is. You need a 5 GHz connection, and if other people are using that Wi-Fi at the same time to stream videos or upload files or anything, it's easy to get latency that's pretty much unplayable for VR. Even if nobody is using the Wi-Fi, you still have to be fairly close to your router to get a good experience latency-wise. I'm also not sure if they have servers in the UK yet, but most of the US should be supported. Last is definitely the biggest con. Even if you have a good Wi-Fi connection that nobody is using, it's still not the same as a good wired PC VR experience. 
you can't turn too fast or else your vision will go black for a second. Every once in a while, you'll only be getting 10 frames per second. And around once an hour, intense games like Boneworks will just randomly crash. So now, my conclusion. This service is by no means a huge game changer for VR. Cloud computing just isn't there yet. However, even with all the negatives I mentioned, I do think this is a good opportunity if you have a Quest 2, a little extra money, and want to experience the VR staples. It does get a little bit annoying when you're fighting off enemies and all of a sudden you're only getting 5 frames per second, but a majority of the time the experience is totally fine. That is going to do it for today. Please leave a like if you enjoyed, a dislike if you didn't, and if you want to join the Rat Gang and subscribe, I really do appreciate it.